Chris is an English major who's going to college to broaden his horizons. Alexandria is an actress who's majoring in fantasies and wild living. She lives in a world of her own. He's just been assigned to share the room. I can't live with you. Why not? Is there something wrong with me? Yes, your sex. Imagine me and you. I do. Get me out of Hildorn, please. This tray is your brain. And this is what she's doing to you, Chris. Chris. She's picking away at your rational side. I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the girl you love. I never acted with you! Forget it, because I am through. And hold her tight. So happy together. You want to make Alex laugh at me? Well, you're going to have to pay for that. Here's a buck. Why don't you get lost? <laughs> Me. So happy together. The housing office made a terrible mistake. It's up to them to make it work. Patrick Dempsey and Helen Slater in Happy Together. From a top secret government laboratory come two genetically altered life forms. One is a dog of astonishing intelligence. The other, a hybrid monster of a brutally violent nature. From Dean R. Kuntz's electrifying bestseller, Watchers, springs a new and terrifying creation. Nancy's been doing a lot of drugs. I know it's catching up with her. I can see it coming. But what can I do? If I like say anything, she'll think I'm not cool. And I don't want to lose a friend. I mean, it's her life. Right? If you have a friend who's in trouble with drugs, don't just stand there. Do something.
in. Come and get me, lobster. Last. This is the cinema. While you're out, Denzel called and said the Mercedes won't be ready till Thursday. Inga says. Excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Sheldrake. Lou, I'm a little busy. What do you want to say to me, Lou? Uh, I think you better take a look at this county printout. Stevie, turn it down. Ah, I'm working. Okay, okay. Wait till Uncle Joey sees how you spend his money. Don't be sorry. Ah, ma. The, see, the thing is, l last year I listened to you and underreported yes. our income from Dicky the Stick. Right. Now, I don't know how it happened, right. but in spite of all your um, extravagant uh, expenses, you ended up with a profit of $13.5 million. Now, that carried That's not over. Bad, is no, it? it's yeah. very good, sir. Yeah, but you see, cool. it carried over t to this year. Now, right. that means that you owe Uncle Sam. Just, four, give, just give me the number. Give me the four number. Million, four million three hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars right. and forty-seven cents. Right. Subtract that from that. Thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, then pay it out of profits. <laughs> profits? Yes, we have profits. Great. But I we, hope so. Sir, we don't have cash. What? It's really very simple. Well, that uh, ninety-foot boat sitting out in yeah, the marina. Yeah. Would you want me to sell it? Mm, possibly. Your two XYs. Because well, you can't sell XY. No. Uh, that, those oil wells that didn't uh, hit. Yeah. Right. Were supposed well, to. And remember that minor stock correction that right, happened right, last right. year. That, okay. What do you want me to well, do? In other words, sir, you have enough cash to get by, but right. not enough to pay the government. Okay. Well, look, I'm a creator. I'm a picture maker. I'm yes, not a businessman. No. Lou, I pay you two hundred grand a year. Yes, do, do something about it. All right, sir. I think there's something we can do. What is it? Tell me. What we need yeah. is a tax loss this Great. year. Great. Well, let's find a tax law this year. A picture that loses money. What? What? You didn't hear that. In this office, you say something like that. Yes, I'm in the business of making hits, yes, sir, not flops. No, I... Lou, you're almost fired. Sir, sir, please, I understand. But if you do not come up with a loser by the end of this fiscal Jesus. tax year, it's... <laughs> When is the uh, when is this fiscal tax year over? Six days. Six. Don't let me out. No, no, don't jump. Oh, no, let me go. Call the police. Let me go. Oh. Should I call Dr. Chang Su Ling Wong? No, 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 no. I don't need an acupuncturist. Someone sticking pins in my behind. I don't need that. How about that herbalist? I don't need a herbalist. I need a movie. A two-bit, lousy, stupid little cheap movie. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. I brought something for you. Oh, thanks, Stevie. Every girl needs a telephone with feet on it. No, really, I'm flattered. It's a lovely gift. I'm sure Mr. Telephone will feel right at home with all his friends. But please, no more. Sometimes I get the feeling they might all gang up on me one night. Well, I wish they could get Mr. Sheldrake to take a look at my movie. Oh, I know, I am. Mr. Sheldrake, it's Stephen Horowitz again. Do you have time to see his film today? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just that... Uh, Marvin. <laughs> yes, Mr. Sheldrake. Uh, this is Marvin the Projectionist. This is, um, what is your name? Uh, Steven. Yeah, he's a boy genius. Yeah, hey, that's boy. A, is that a pizza? Uh, oh, no, that's a... <laughs> no, that's his friend. That's very funny, yeah, Mr. Sheldrake. <laughs> uh, be careful, please. That's yeah. the only copy I got. Please be careful. Sit, sit down, sit down. Uh, uh, Steve, Steven, right? Thank uh, you. Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, it's very good. Thank <laughs> you. Go on, tell me more about your movie. Well, um... It, Shh, the picture I'll... started.
many billions of years ago, as the oceans of Mars began to dry up, the inhabitants of this desolate world were driven into underground cities, where they lived for many eons in peace and harmony until one day. Sire! Sire! I have news of a most astounding and sinister nature. What is it now, astrologer? According to my divinations and calculations, Mars is about to run out of air. This is serious. But out there, what will we breathe? We need help immediately. I shall consult Brainex. You can't trust the future of our world to the likes of Brainex. Only the secrets of the Zodiac can save our planet. Be silent! Heal Brainex! Court astrologer says we are running out of air. Is this true? <sighs> Cloak and soft man, sprechen bogus. Platuberalagasso, marzo octo working. What can be done to avoid this catastrophe? Brainex gonna look around, Kingo. Brainex thinking grandma gasso snopto solo planeto. Cobo platuberata marzo work on Java. Oh no, you don't mean... Uh-oh, lobsterness? Horrificus. Call for the lobster man! Call for the lobster man! Call for the lobster man! Lobster in here. Hooy! I smell fish. I hate fish. Lobster man, we got a big problem. Mars is dying. We are running out of air. So? So, I'm commanding you to go where there's plenty of air, get it and bring it back to us. No. Not interested. But lobster man, there will be plenty of tasty soft food units to be eaten there. Remember, once you are off Mars, there is no law that says you can't eat food without shells, you know. Hmm. I haven't had soft food since I was a mere crayfish. Then it's our deal? Yeah, I'll shake on it. Um, just to make sure you keep your end of the bargain, I am assigning the Mambo to keep an eye on you. Now go. Go now. I hate fish. Imagine the sinister fate that awaited these unsuspecting Earthlings as forces from outer space were about to interrupt a lovely ride to nowhere. We really are lucky that your uncle's giving you a job for the summer, John. I'll say, darling, I've been pestering old Uncle Freddy for absolutely months for this job. What time was he expecting us, honey? About three o'clock, I think. What time is it now? 4.36. Well, that can't be right. Damn, the little chap is gone and stopped again. I thought you were going to get your watch fixed. It's always stopping at 436. Yeah. Strange, isn't it? I wonder where we could be now. Right in the middle of bloody nowhere. What's wrong with the car? I don't know. Thank <laughs> you. 
crash. Oh my goodness, there might be survivors. Cigarette? Sure, pal. Cigarette. Gasper. Flame. Torch. Nicotine. Lung rocket. Coffin nail. Throat bomb. Tonsil fire. Mouth flare. Glow pill. Sometimes you get a hunch. Not an idea, not even a feeling. More like a rabbit punch to the base of the brain. What'll it be, kids? We got a telephone. We've just seen a spaceship. <laughs> yeah, we're little green men, too. <laughs> now, hush up, Rufus. The phone is on the wall right over there. Thanks. Old Uncle Freddy will know what to do. Oh, blast, no answer. Now what? I'll call the authorities. Hello, operator. Connect me with the authorities at once.
13th Army Headquarters, Military Intelligence, Domestic Division, Unexplained Phenomena Department, Colonel Ankrum speaking. What? Where? How? Who? Listen, fella. There is no such thing. Get me the Pentagon. The operator ought to make a collect call. Uh, would you turn that thing down, sir? I can hardly hear you. Oh, sorry. I'm connecting you now, sir. Yeah, this is a collect call from Tommy Sledge, P.I. Some damn cheek of that guy is saying there's no such thing as flying saucers. The world could be in an awful predicament and they go and hang up on me. Sledge investigations? It's me, doll. Oh, what gifts, Beluga? I may be a little bit late getting back. A couple of kids just drove up. Uh, they look pretty spooked. Of course, they may be hopped up on goofballs. Maybe a uh, sniffing scrog, blobsy, chuckle dust, smoking bales, a big monk. Oh, well, sounds real exciting, big guy. But maybe, just maybe, they're telling the truth. About what? Listen, I gotta move on. Gotta ankle it, lamb it, split, pound my dog, beat my boats. You like it? I, I, it's wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's a good part. Wait, wait. Beautiful color. Let's find a place that can process the film in a hurry. And in the meantime, not tell anyone about the Martians until we see the pictures. Great. We've got a spare, but no jack. That gas station attendant over there can change a tire while we get the film processed. Good thinking. Oh, what the... Oh, uh, hello there. Uh, oh, say, you want to get that uh, that flat tire fixed? Can you get right on, but Yeah, sure. Uh, just pull it in this empty service bay. Come on. There you go. This way, good. Good, good. Just how long do you think this is going to take, then? Oh, mm. come back in about an hour, okay? Fine. Here's the key, spares in the boot. Boot. Key. Okay. Oh, is there a place that we can get our film developed? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Gomer's Motel can send it out for you. Probably won't come back until tomorrow, though. Well, we'll just have to wait. Get to Gomer's Motel. Just go down here about three blocks and hang a left. Now, you keep on walking until you come to this big old tree stump. Then you want to hang a right. Then you come to a fork in the road. OK, at the fork in the road, you want to go left, because that's right. And if you go right, that's wrong. you pay your check and shove off. I'm trying to close up here. Hey, not so fast. I want to see the Martians first. <laughs> I'll give you Martians. Now, either buy something or I'm kicking you out of here. Hey, now, wait a minute. I bought something once. What's this? You've been carrying that empty cup around for two weeks. Well, give me a refill. But what kind of joint is this anyway? All right. But just this one time. You bum. Well... But don't rile me. I gotta go in the back and get some more coffee. Well, go get it. I'll watch the joint for you. <laughs> hey, 
What the hell? or cruel hooks. Police are investigating the strange and fantastic discovery made earlier today on the outskirts of town at Zip's Last Chance Gas and Grub. Hungry patrons report finding the place completely deserted with the exception of two human skeletons. Is this the work of Martians or natural causes? Darling, isn't that Zip's diner? The place where we use the telephone? I'm talking with Professor Frederick Plocostomus, president and founder of the Astronomical Institute. Hey, that's old Uncle Freddy. Hello, Uncle. Wow. Tell me, Professor, as one of the most noted scientists in the study of extraterrestrial phenomena, do you possibly think that the terrible events that occurred earlier today at Zip's Diner have any relation whatsoever to Martians? Hmm. No. Then is it impossible that creatures from some other world in our solar system have clandestinely infiltrated our sophisticated network of military detection systems and perhaps landed on Earth? Hmm. No. Then just what do you think, Professor? I am convinced that the only kind of life that could survive on Mars would be a giant clam. Uh-huh. This is Big Dick Strange saying so long. Do you think this has anything to do with what we saw in the desert? Of course it's got something to do with it, sister. Wake up, jumpstart the gray cells, hand crank the cranial case. Who are you? What the blazes are you doing in our closet? My name Tommy Sledge, P.I. Pissed indefinitely. And I'm here because a reward for catching Martians means big bucks. Major League Mazuma, serious spinach, cabbage, gitas, lettuce. Well, I just suggest you leave our room immediately or let us call the police. That's Jake with me, kids. But I'm putting a tail on you. Maybe a pig snout and floppy ears. And I won't be far away. So close to the city, but it feels like the country, you know? It's real hard to believe. So you're, you're a friend of Melissa's, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, she's a nice girl. Yeah. She really is nice. I like nice. her. <laughs> you know, you have the cutest little air. I just want to nibble it. You know, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think I know what you're after, and I'm not interested, okay? I don't know who you're used to going out with. But you're not used to going out with me. I was hoping for some kind of conversation here. Ah! <laughs> you're teasing, right? <laughs> here, can you get this back here, this little hug here? I'm not teasing. I'm not serious. Like back off a little. I, I, feel oh, like, come on. I feel like a piece of meat. I'm going to oh. take a breather. Jeez. What? Where you, where you go? Well, come right back. Maybe I'll have time for another date yet tonight. Oh, so you're back, huh? 
Did you cool off? Because I know I did. Oh. I can't stand the sight of death. Are these snapshots ready yet? Well, here they are, the pictures that will astound the world. Open it up, I can hardly wait. Blast! Oh, What's wrong? They're blank. Blank. Damn! Must have been the radiation. Or you left the lens cap on. Yeah, yeah, must be the radiation. There is only one thing we can do. You mean? Yes, let's get our money back. <coughs> yes? We have the Pentagon on the line for you, sir. And about time, too. Hmm. Colonel Ankrum here? Yes, sir. The bogey was spotted by two civilians at approximately 1,600 hours yesterday, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Radar confirmed the visual contact. Oh, absolutely. We'll uh, keep a tight lid on this one, sir. Well, I would recommend that we reconnoiter the entire perimeter of uh, Sector TMA-1 in the event of an affirmative extraterrestrial actuality. Yes, sir. Hush, hush. Uh, I won't even make out a report on this one, sir. Yes, sir. Well, oh, thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Sergeant Schwartz? They didn't believe me again. with the tire? It is ready, sir. What's the damage? There is no charge, sir. Idea, not even a feeling. More like a rabbit punch to the base of the brain. Whatever it is, it's not of this earth. Quite correct, Earthman, but you will not share your knowledge. <laughs> Mambo, look what you've done. You've frightened my snack. Seize them. 
Have you dubbed it in English? I think we lost him. Uncle Freddy's in. We're frightfully late. Professor? Don't bother me. There's a very important scientific experiment going on. But it's me, John. Yeah. Graham. But we've seen the monsters from outer space. Wait a minute. I'll take my moonshine. Well, what do you... My dear boy, it's you! Why didn't you say so? Well, the two of you arrived just in time to catch some Martians. And we saw them, Uncle. You're kidding. Giant clams, right? Well, one of them was a gorilla, and the other was a giant lobster. Which one was in charge? The lobster. That's it! My theories are correct. Nobel Prize. Here I come. What do you mean? Didn't you see me on TV? Yes. You talked about the enormous pressures on Mars and the need of a party race to survive in such bleak conditions. Exactly. Something with a tough hide. Or like a clam or a shrimp or a... Lobster. Of course. It all makes perfect sense. And the gorilla would be the slave. What are they doing here? Their purpose is clear. Maybe not to you, but to me. What do you think of my movie so far? Hmm. Uh, hello? Did you tell Mrs. Sheldrake she could take your yacht out for a spin? What? Which Mrs. Sheldrake? The net. They're both nuts. <laughs> well, this Coast Guard guy wants to know how you're going to handle the salvage rights. Uh, uh, Tommy, call my attorney, the wealthy one, let him take care of it for me, okay? Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, do you like it so far? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just up with them. I was so, um. It was heinous enough that the demented lobster man would steal the life-giving atmosphere of Earth, but his appetite for perversion knew no limits. And that Colonel Ancrum wasn't too bloody interested. Let me talk to him. Hello, authorities. This is Professor Placostomus. I want to talk to Colonel Ancrum. It's about those Martians that landed in the desert. What? The fool! 
What happened? He's already on his way to the landing site. He believed your story after all. I'm afraid he only took a small staff with him. He doesn't stand a chance against the lobster man from Mars. Schwartz? Yes, sir. Whatever it is, it's in there. I think you're right, sir. Look at these glittery tracks leading into the cave. Don't touch that! That might be atomic. You're right, sir. It's halfway off the scale. I don't know whether this menace is from outer space or Russia. But either way, it's the enemy. We've got to stop it before things get worse. Sergeant Schwartz. Yes, sir. Whatever's in that cave, you go in there and shoot it dead. Yes, sir. See every frame. Hello? Is Scripper Bruce around? Bruce is Professor Pedostomus. Fine. And you? Can you come round to the lab right away? It's a lobster. A big one. Great. Bye-bye, Bruce. Who was that? That skipper Bruce, the best lobster fisherman I know. He'll help us. He'll be here soon. Golly, that was fast. Colonel Antrim, what a pleasant surprise. HQ informed me that you telephoned my office. Apparently, you know something about this. And this. This is what's left of my trusty aide, Sergeant Schwartz. Amazing. It's nothing that's ever been seen on Earth before. Definitely of Martian origin. How do you know that, Professor? Oh, Mary, be a good girl, go into the kitchen, make a nice hot cup of tea, and remember, the pot to the kettle, not the kettle to the pot. Would you like some tea, girl? Tea, John? Oh, yes. And darling, don't forget, milking first. There's a dear. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. What do you make of it, Uncle? First, we should find out what that pulsation is in the area where the heart should be. Do you think it's still alive, then? Alive? What are you kidding? I put 50 slugs in it. It's deader than a son of a bitch. Do you think you can kill an alien space bat with bullets? <laughs> Look! The wounds are beginning to heal themselves. What an organism. Not unlike an intelligent vegetable. Gentlemen, what we have here is an intellectual cucumber. The mind boggles. But if it's reviving, it might attack us any moment. What can we do? I saw it for the first time five minutes ago. You expect a whole big analysis? How should I know? Will you two mental midgets quit quibbling? We've got to do something or else the whole United States is in big trouble. But what can we do? I'll tell you what we can do. We can
can flush the goddamn thing down the goddamn toilet. Is that the solution your military geniuses can come up with? This has to be preserved for the sake of science. Science, my ass. Back in WW2, we'd have flushed first and asked questions later. Is that so? Well, we'll do things my way, you military moron. Now, you watch it, Dr. Jekyll. Don't get me mad or I'll really get sore. We do things by the book. And what book is that? Who's who in outer space? Ha, ha, ha. If my Uncle Patton were alive, he'd show you intellectual eggheads a thing or two. But what about the lobster man? What's all this fuss about a lobster man? Who's this fruitcake? I be Skipper Bruce. Ah, Brucey, delighted you could make it. Do you think you could catch a six-foot lobster from Mars? Ha! Now listen. And listen good. I've been lobstering for 23 years, man and boy, and I never met one I couldn't snag. What do you make of this? dihydrogen oxide applied externally to the exoskeleton. What? Throw boiling water on it, as master chefs have, in their infinite wisdom, been dealing with lobsters for centuries. But that wasn't a lobster. Mary, we seem to have run out of your excellent tea. Be a good girl, go in the kitchen and brew us some more. But I just... Uh, now listen, sweetheart. You don't want to worry that pretty little head of yours with a lot of man talk, do you? But we just... No, no, why don't you just go in the kitchen, make some more tea, and leave the Martians to us? expect us to run off this lobster man with a pot of boiling water, can you? 
Mm, the boy's right. But four divisions, fully armed with pots of boiling water. Now we've got something. Wait a minute. Why should we run after the lobster man with pots of boiling water, which will cool in minutes? Let him come to us. We can set a trap that the allegedly haunted Throckmorton estates, which teem with natural hot springs. All right. I'll call the Pentagon. I'll order up 10,000 battle-ready troops. We don't want your troops screwing it up. If you were a lobster man, would you enter a haunted house surrounded by artillery? Uncle's right, Colonel. You have to let us give it a go. All right. I'll give you 12 hours. And then, I blast the crap out of him. T. For three male chauvinist pigs. Who are you calling, Uncle? Oh, Throckmorton, of course. Hello, Mr. Throckmorton. I'd like to ask a favor. I had some friends in from Boise. I'd like to give them a little thrill. To see your house and hot springs. I understand. But goodbye, Mr. Throckmorton. Well, do we have his permission, Uncle? Yes. <laughs> Spooky old place, Uncle. Uh, nothing to be afraid of. It simply exudes mystery and suspense. Oh, yes, yeah, it's got quite a nasty history. In 1783, it was built on an old Eskimo graveyard by Ebenezer Throckmorton, who died mysteriously on his wedding night, strangled by the sheets of his marriage bed. The newlywed Mrs. Throckmorton was never found. Years later, their children suffered the same fate. That doesn't make any sense. Don't question the powers of darkness, my dear. These things are far beyond our understanding. Mr. Throckmorton is the last of the clan. When he dies, do you know what will happen to these musty corridors? No, what? They say the house will die with him. The last of the Throckmortons. Then the bloody hands of a million tortured and sleepless souls will reach out from the grave to touch the living. Sir, uh, Costas, if I could just have a word with you, please. Uh, excuse me. I'm handing this. If you screw it up, you'll have to answer for the consequences. Professor, you have less than two hours before I order in my troops, who are assembling even as we speak. I'm off to join my troops. And at 2100 hours, that's nine o'clock to you. Kaboom! Walk this way. Wait here. Thank you. 
Barry, won't you take a seat? The master will be with you presently. John, this house contains some very curious relics of the Spanish Inquisition. Look there. They say that uh, Mr. Throckmorton still has a working torture chamber in his basement. Will the upkeep of a thing like that cost a fortune? Now, these toe screws alone, they'd cost anything up to $40. Contact uh, may prove a conductor of our spiritual energy. And uh, let's close our eyes. Oh, spirits of the night, hear my pleas. Playful mood uh, tonight. Uh. You may now make your request to the spirits, uh, Professor Plocostomus. Oh, wise and powerful spirit, come in from the darkness and answer my question. Can you find it in your divine wisdom to grant us permission to conduct some simple and harmless scientific experiments in the natural hot springs? You will not live long enough to conduct any experiments. Don't worry about it. Uh, Marvin's a genius with burnt film. Three minutes to go. Three, two, one, fire! We made it. We oh, made yeah? It. Where's the girl?
son. It's times like these when you have to look at the big picture. So let's all bow our heads in silence. Let's remember that our only regret should be that she had but one life to give for her country. Colonel, feast your peepers on this. Who in the hell are you? Me? I'm just a passerby from Palookaville. A regular jug eared Joe, a plain spoken, Gasper smoking, crew cut, anvil jawed, dumb but lucky. Now cut the crap! Just tell me what you want. Okay. All right, pal. My name's Sledge. And look at this. Lobster tracks. But what's this mean? It means that either he escaped or he walked backwards from the horizon to commit suicide in this bonfire. Lobster man lives. Then maybe Mary lives too. Where there's hope, the chance. Too bad the house fell into the hot springs. I'd have to think up another method to destroy the lobster man from Mars. Do you take me for a fool? I know that as soon as your bonds are loosened, you will run away. I promise I won't. Very well. Mambo, come here. You can finish your work on the air collector. I need the air conditioning later. Untie this earth man, and if he tries to escape, destroy him. Are you really from Mars? Oh, unfortunate planet. Why do you say that? I come from a peace-loving planet. We were all living in harmonic convergence in the true spirit of cosmic brotherhood and fraternity, and then they came. Who? The evil body men from Neptune. Wonderful. With their sickening long ears and their horrifying little pink noses, they rain down upon us in never-ending hordes. What do you want with me? I mean you no harm. I merely wish to finish my existence in this cave, isolated from the people of your world, in mourning for the people of mine, alone, except for Professor Mom. How do I know you're telling the truth? Go! I release you now. Bring your friends here so that I may impress upon them the innocence of my intentions. You mean I can leave? Yes, yes, you're free! Okay, bye! She returns with her comrades. We shall have one glorious last summer. Then you can finish the air collecting system, and we can get out of this armpit of the solar system. That gorilla? Yeah. Who is it? That's my Uncle Joey. The brain operation didn't affect his acting one bit. We've been searching for 12 hours. Still no sign of the girl. But we can't give up now, Colonel. Sometimes you get a hunch. Not an idea, not even a feeling. More like a rabbit punch to the base of the brain. Where even a mug like me just can't figure the angles, the odds, the scan, the skinny. Look, it's her! She's alive! I knew it! She's alive, look! Darling, are you all right? I thought you were blown to bits. He didn't rape you, did he? Oh, don't worry. He doesn't know the difference between boys and girls. He doesn't? And he's not so bad. He just wants to live here in peace, away from the evil bunny men from Neptune who have invaded Mars. Bunny men? 
Good God, the bastards brainwashed her. Colonel, he didn't brainwash me. I'm just repeating what the man said. What else did he tell you? He said that he wants to live in his cave and to have a little air to call his own. Air? That's it? It makes perfect sense. What do you mean? When you consider the way those bastards breathe, I've suspected for some time that Mars has been suffering from a severe air leakage. I'm sure he's here to steal our air. So that's his plan. Of course you don't. And when he's stealing our atmosphere, what's he wanting to eat? I didn't ask. Pure information, my dear. Lobster men are voracious flesh eaters. You mean? Yes. He'll lure us back into his cave, and he'll eat us. Well, Mondo, I don't think they're going to show up. Put that thing on auto suck. We'll dine out this evening. Now I know what happened to the missing link. They put him into khaki and turned him into a colonel. <laughs> or if I had you in the army. Screw the army. Now you've done it. Goodness, it's them! Die, Martian scum! Have you done it? We've been in this cave as fast as we can. The cargo burst! Go! God! Retreat! Retreat! There's a vehicle! Hey! Who the hell are you? Son, in the name of the United States of America, we hereby commandeer that vehicle. The hell you do, G.I. Joe. Get you get my shotgun quick. You better look and see what's coming. We better hide. idea that I'll need all of your cooperation, even yours. Here's my plan. know the difference between boys and girls. I lied! <laughs>
we discuss this like gentlemen? You don't want to eat Mary, she's got skinny legs, thin bony arms, flat chest. He gets the message, John. Uh, listen, why don't you eat me first? Then if you're still hungry, you can eat Mary. But if you get full from eating me, you can let her go. You fool. I shall eat both of you, although I prefer the female as an hors d'oeuvre. Oh, oh, damn, it's stopped again. Oh, dear. <laughs> Come and get me, lobster. Looks like the geyser got him. Wasn't that geyser? The lobster was killed because he got too crabby. Ah, oh, sweetheart. It's times like these when you have to look at the big picture. So let's bow our heads in silence. And remember that our only regret should be that he had but one life to give for his country. Agram! Mary! Lagosimos! Wow. Long day, huh? Look, kid, I know it's tough, real tough. You blast the big space cooties into hot gumbo, and what do you get? You lose your fellow, your steady bow, your regular classic comic reading, double bubble popping, kissy faced Joe. Oh, for goodness sakes. Hey, I got problems too. No reward money. As a matter of fact, every time I focus my winkers on that big horizon, I see thousands of greenbacks sprouting little wings, lining up into formation and taking off. A dame with no palooka. That's a story just about as old as this crazy globe. A crazy globe wobbling around on its axis like a drunk with one foot nailed to the floor. Some things never change no matter how much a sap like me might want him to. that the victims of the dreaded Lobster Man were returned to their former selves. Once again, the dignity of the human spirit triumphed over evil. Mother Nature had placed the means upon the earth to destroy the Martians. Good old faithful. It's 
the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. What action. What passion. Wow, it's great. Thank you, Mr. Shultrick. I, wa I want to handle that movie. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I mean it. I want you to know that I would be honored and thrilled to present that film of yours. Steven Thank you. It's fabulous. Tell me about that leading lady. She is an incredible actress. Uh, do you have her home number? Uh, yeah, you liked her. Uh, what did you think about the leading man? He's a really big star in Scotland. Mm, well, you call him and I'll call her. Oh, okay. it's so good. I tell you what. We got a deal. All right. I want you to go see Lou, my accountant. He's down the hall, turn left, and you go sign whatever papers are necessary. You got it, Mr. Sheldrake. You... Right away. Right away. We got a hit on our right hands. Right on. I'm telling you, the public's going to love this. Love it. Yeah. Lou, our worries are over. Now on the film front, this weekend's surprise opener, Lobster Man from Mars, has earned more money in two days than any other film in the history of motion pictures. Score another winner for movie mogul J.P. Sheldrake. You mean he's still now in the meeting? Weather, it looks like it's gonna be well, a please tell him to call tomorrow. me back immediately. Yes, Stevie, I'll tell him. J.P., this is the biggest opener we've ever had. That good? Well, it's good and bad. Well, what, what, what's the good? It's good because the studio has made a huge profit. <laughs> oh, excellent. And what, what's the bad? And it's bad because there are two agents from the IRS waiting outside to take you away for tax fraud. Oh, I see. Well, Lou, I want you to uh, get me out of it. I want you to take care of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the lovely gift, Stevie. I'll put that down and hurry up. You don't want to be late for the plane. You're right. I'd hate for us to miss the Paris opening of Lobster Man at the Circus.
so? It's been two months already. And what do you think we're breathing right now? I'll tell you what we're breathing. Air. Do you know what this is going to cost me? Do you think the spaceships grow on trees? So I made a little mistake. So sue me. <laughs> <laughs>